Hey everybody. Okay, we're going to show you how to do a fun option in Animate using filters to create interesting effects. And you end up with little animations like this. And so many options to play with that you can explore for your animation. Okay, let's make a quick new file. Great. Okay, so we're going to use a ring in Animate. To make a ring, use the oval tool and we're going to turn the fill off and we're going to turn the stroke on and you can also mess around with the size of the stroke so I can make something really thick like this which seems a little bit ridiculous or I can make the stroke a little bit thinner but either way you notice that because I've only got the stroke on and no fill I can use a ring. Now the ring is good to use in this case just to show you how the filters work because you'll be able to see more because you can see things through the middle and around the sides. In order to access the filter option, this is similar to a motion tween in that you have to make this object uh, a symbol in order to access the filters. So we're going to right click on the object and convert it to a symbol, call it ring, make sure it's a movie clip, say so, okay. Now let's just go one second down the line because we're working in 30 frames a second, 30 frames a second and put a class between on it up here so that whatever filter we apply to this will slowly progressively add on to the ring. Now you'll notice that this is one of those times in Animate when you need to click in the right place to access the option that you want. So here I am in frame 30 and there's my ring and over in my properties menu I can't see the option for filter. As soon as I click on the object I'm going to see the option for filter. There's our color effect option that we've used in the past and now we're going to add a filter. Let's start with Glow. Under Glow, you can change the blur of the Glow and the Y and the X values to see what that does there. You can change the color of the Glow. Let's make it green. You can increase the strength. You can change the quality, low, medium, high. I kind of like using the low in this case because you can see more of the effect and it looks a bit different. Uh, you can also create a knockout, which knocks out the original object in there. And then you can also use Inner Glow, which in this case, if you've got a knockout on it, isn't going to do very much. So let's leave it like that for now. So the Glow, you have some neat options. You don't even have to knock it out at the end if you want. It just adds a glow around your object. Let's go a little bit farther down the line and add another filter so you can see what they can do. Classic Tween again. And in frame 60, you click back on the object and make sure you're right in that frame. Clicking on the object, there we go. So you can see the previous filter that was added under Glow. We're going to add a new one. Let's do Bevel. Let's take the knockout off so we can see what we're actually beveling. And instantly you can see the bevel pop up here. You can increase, again, the blur of the bevel or how strong it is. So you can now see more definition when it's stronger. Uh, the strength of it. Uh, you can change the color that's actually applied onto the surface of it for the shadow and the highlight. The fun thing you can play around with is the angle, so watch how it changes when you mess around with the angle on the bevel and the distance. It starts to split the object apart and you can change the angle at which that happens. So you can see that in a lot of cases you can make some wacky effects that you have no idea what they're going to look like until you start playing around with them. Okay, um, you also have this knockout option as well, which could be interesting. So just play around with it and see what it can do. Let's quickly watch it. Do command return. You can see a few things happening. Now everything's really clicking back fast because as soon as we hit 60, it's obviously going to go right back to 1 and it's going to click back really quickly. Let's just keep going and do one more thing. Insert a keyframe. Create a class of tween. And let's go to 90, click on the object. Let's knock these down here. Let's add a drop shadow. Drop shadow can be fun. If you're on a black background, you're not going to notice anything unless you change the color of the drop shadows. Let's make it pink. And we can again increase the blur on it, the strength of it, low, medium, high. The distance away is what's going to be interesting. Your drop shadow is actually going to drop away and appear like it's moving. You can create a different angle and that will also make it appear like it's moving. So over time it's appearing and it's moving away. So let's watch that. And I'm going to add a few extra seconds on here so it doesn't click back to the stop, right to the start immediately. 
or I only added a half a second there. There you go. Okay, so essentially you can just mess around with these filters and keep making things, adding them on top, on top, on top. This is just one layer, one shape that's had a bunch of different filters added onto it. You can just keep experimenting with them and see what kind of effects you can make. All right, have fun.